Welcome back, Time Crunch fans. I'm your host, Coach Adam Pulford. Well, today we have a nice light topic for you. We'll be talking all about mechanistic target of rapamycin and adenosine monophosphate kinase as the primary pathways of strength and endurance development in the body. Now, before you peace out and say you don't want to listen to any of that technical jargon, hold on. I'll do my best to make it worth your time. Strength training for endurance athletes has been an interest of mine since, well, probably around age 10 or 11, whenever I started doing sports. Investigating that optimal balance between the weight room and your primary sport, in our case, cycling or any other endurance sports like running, swimming, etc., it is not simple or easy, but it is a worthwhile pursuit. Added to this complexity, if you do both, then when and how to do each, when and how to take a full rest day, how to pattern this around the everyday challenges of our lives, and where to start so you don't get injured. Today, we'll be exploring this topic and these questions inspired by you, our audience. We'll start with a question submitted recently, spin off into the physiological pathways which the body uses to enhance both strength and endurance, then come back to practical guidelines on it all. Keep in mind a big, big disclaimer. No one, and I, I'll repeat, no one has the answers to these questions for everyone, including myself. We're learning more as the science and research improves, and science is always a great place to start. Then we apply it to the everyday athlete, keeping what works, adjusting what doesn't, all with the aim of improving athletes like yourself with effective training modalities. So my goal today is twofold. Number one, try to make some complicated stuff more simple. And number two, give you solid examples that you can apply to your training while empowering you to experiment and find what works best for you as an individual in the balance of strength and endurance training. All right, here we go. The question from the audience was this. In episode 166, you recommended that weight training is better combined with hard anaerobic days, example intervals, rather than with easy days. That makes sense. But you did not address what order is preferred. My guess is that doing weight training earlier in the day would significantly degrade the quality slash performance of a session later on in the day, and therefore doing the weight work after the session is to be the preferred. Your thoughts, Dan. Uh, yeah, Dan, you're right. Some heavy strength work can zap the legs or the body for a higher quality session later on in the day. So I'd recommend if, okay, if you're doing both in the same day. Do your intervals on the bike first in the morning, have a recovery meal, and it waste at least three hours, if not longer, before hitting the gym later on in the day. Now, that would be my advice for a heavier training period that an athlete is going through where they're doing intervals on the bike that are, say, above zone two, so zone three and higher, and they're doing gym sessions where the intensity is a is also higher, meaning a perceived effort of seven out of 10 for the main sets or going to near max on the, the primary muscle groups or the, or the main sets. Okay. So we're going hard on both the bike and the, the weights. And also note that this period of training, it, it's heavy training and it's not going to last forever. That would be my recommendation. Okay. So doing this year round is not my advice. Okay. But in this time period of training, this is how I would pattern it. And it seems like to maximize stress and strain from that anaerobic aspect, going hard on the hard days and keeping it easy on the easy days will allow for best overload training effect and recovery for maximum gains. I generally find this to be the most effective way to train with time-rich athletes as well as athletes who maybe they're not time-rich they're still time crunched, but they don't have the time to do continuous hours and hours of training. So we break it up. Okay. We're doing two a days or two one hour sessions, maybe in a day. However, some muscle physiologists and coaches could raise an eyebrow at this. And some athletes may say, I quote, feel better 
if I do gym sessions on separate days from intensity on the bike. So let's explore why this is and go through some of the latest research and thoughts in physiology, then come back to that practical advice. But first, the deep weeds of science. mTOR and AMPK pathways. mTOR stands for mammalian or mechanistic target of rapamycin. Simplistically put, this is the pathway that signals tissue growth or muscle growth in mammals triggered by high intensity movements like strength training or sprinting in some aspects. AMPK is adenosine monophosphate kinase, and this is a cellular energy sensor that through endurance training stimulus elicits more mitochondrial protein synthesis rather than pure myofibrillar protein synthesis that mTOR does. And thus it seems to create this interference effect. Okay. So in summary there, mTOR wants to grow tissue, whereas AMPK wants to grow mitochondria, not muscle tissue. Okay. So mTOR grow muscles to get big and strong. AMPK grow more mitochondria so I can develop more aerobic capacity. That's the way to kind of think of these two in a very, very simplistic way, mind you. Okay. So this interference effect, what the heck does that mean? This is AMPK taking away from mTOR because it seems like that cellular sensor overrides mTOR. Okay. So AMPK, if you turn that on through endurance training, it signals, it's like, whoa, this athlete is doing much more aerobic training. Therefore, I'm going to override the system to create more mitochondria versus grow more muscle. And therefore, they start to have this competing interest of who gets what in this scenario. So they work against each other in making gains on the bike and in the gym, especially in the way of new tissue growth, which we call strength or hypertrophy. So let's talk about some best practices for time crunched athletes when it comes to mTOR, AMPK, and the interference effect experiencing in the gym and on the bike. So, scenario number one this is when strength and hypertrophy is the main goal, meaning I want to gain strength or I want to gain actual muscle growth. And this could be if you lack strength and snap on the bike and you want to increase muscle size and strength eventually to develop more anaerobic capacity in the long run. You're just going to need more, more muscle mass to do that. First step is you want to reduce the volume of riding and the intensity. Okay. So you want to, you just want to dial down volume. You want to dial down the stress that's happening on the bike. Then you want to increase load in the gym and you want to do this progressively. Okay. Little by little. So you don't get injured or overdo it and then hurt yourself. Okay, this is just a very simplistic, high-level way of thinking about it and organizing the strategy around it. Prioritize strength training on the key days, either before the endurance session or as the only workout of the day. I know it's mind-blowing to a lot of people saying, what, don't ride your bike and do strength training? But yeah, absolutely, especially if you're in base training mode or, if, like I said, the primary goal is to increase strength and or hypertrophy so that in the long run, you're actually gaining a little bit more size and strength uh, that you can apply to the bike. So what are some examples of this look like? I'm going to just kind of read through. You can go to our landing page on the podcast and you can look at these examples as well um, or check it out on YouTube. But here, here's a week example. Monday, rest day. Tuesday, strength. Wednesday, endurance day. Thursday, strength. Friday, rest. Saturday group ride, Sunday long endurance ride. And what we're doing there is we're keeping the hard days hard, keeping the easy days easy. And we have two standalone strength training sessions and you wrap all that up in eight hours of training. Okay. Keep in mind, like you're putting the strength training on the forefront here. You put it on the front burner as the primary thing, you're going to turn on mTOR and make sure that you get your, your tissue growth, your strength growth as the primary aspect. So you're going to let the bike gains go away for a little bit. That is, that is the objective here in scenario number one. Now, scenario number two gets a little tricky. This is when strength and, and endurance are the main goals. Okay. Now, 
this is tricky because muscle and muscle, <laughs> the, the interference effect. Okay. That's the tricky part. However, muscle strength and endurance without growth is typically what many cyclists are going for and striving for in their training. So my argument here is that the interference effect is really not that big of a deal. Okay. Why? Because I'm, I'm not going to grow tissue. I can get benefit out of doing muscular work by growing mitochondria as well as, um, doing hard repetitive movements in the gym or on the bike. And I'm going to get the benefit there. How do I do this? Volume and intensity on the bike is going to be moderate and increasing progressively. Gym sessions happen after endurance sessions, ideally three hours or more post-ride and after adequate recovery food intake. Okay, so have a meal, chill out at least three hours, if not longer, then hit the gym later on in the day. This is like I said earlier on in the podcast. The reason why we do that is the bike is still the primary objective here. Okay, we want to capitalize on um, the primary sport. Okay, so we're going to stress our body in that way when the body is most fresh and then hit the gym later on in the day. Here's some examples of what that could look like. Monday, rest day, Tuesday, intervals in the morning, strength training in the evening. Wednesday, recovery ride or easy endurance. Thursday is intervals in the morning, strength training in the evening. Friday is rest or an easy ride. Saturday, group ride. Sunday, long endurance ride. And again, th this is, a, sh this is a, a period of time. This is not always, okay? I want, I want everybody to listen to this and see these examples with that lens that I'm trying to communicate with. Scenario three, this is when we want to maintain strength and mobility as the main goal from the strength training session. But meanwhile, the cycling is the primary objective. So volume and intensity on the bike are the high priority. Gym sessions, best to happen after endurance sessions. Ideally, that three-hour post-ride after a good meal, good restoration, some chill-out time. Or, now this is something that I do on a very regular basis, okay? The load is so light that we use these sessions as activation movements only and can be done in the morning, like before the endurance session actually happens. So think about like, 15, 20 minutes, very light body weight, maybe some foam rolling, um, lunges, kind of like yoga-ish type of movements that uh, Aaron Carson and I have talked about that on podcasts before in the past, but these are not super intense. Perceived effort of these are like three and four, not that seven, eight, nine. Okay. So some examples of this would be, again, as we're framing it up in the context of the week, Monday is rest day, Tuesday is activation plus intervals together. Wednesday is endurance, Thursday is intervals plus strength training maybe, maybe later on in the day because we want to maintain some of the stuff that we've been doing in the gym. So I'm going to separate those two on Thursday and then Friday is going to be rest or recovery ride. Saturday is going to be that group ride or a race. Sunday is the long endurance day. Now, as I'm talking through all of this, if you're like, wow, this is really, this is hard for me to fully grasp and understand, totally get it. Totally understand. As I was creating this, this podcast, it, it's taken several weeks for a number of different reasons, but I've worked with our content creators to uh, also have a companion article to go along with this. Okay. Because this is super confusing. And so for some of our visual learners as well, that companion article will have some of these examples of how to structure your own training. So this is going to come out in our CTS newsletter this week. Definitely go there and read more of what we went over today. But in particular, look at the examples that we laid out for the given scenarios. Experiment with yourself based on your goals, what you need according to your strengths, limiters, and the time of season, and dial it all in for yourself. You can find that at trainright.com and click on newsletter, or you can click on podcast and it's going to be nested in there as well. Finally, I'll say this, it's kind of a, kind of a bold statement. Okay. And some people will argue with me, but this is my, um, opinion based on uh, my experience in coaching athletes. The interference effect is not something any of us should primarily be concerned about 
unless you're a cyclist looking to add significant size or strength in the gym. We'll get benefits from the gym by decreasing cycling volume and intensity, and then increasing training load in the gym for a short time, usually around that base build time period. And then we adjust it back down in the gym and back up on the bike as we maintain what we've gained in the gym over the course of a year. So again, that, that is my opinion, and that is typically the way I do it. It's not to say that I forego strength and hypertrophy gains, but for the majority of my athletes, we are capitalizing on these neuromuscular gains in the gym, as well as a little bit of size and strength early on, and then we maintain that over the course of the year. So in summary, strength training and endurance training have competing interests when it comes to forming adaptations in the body via two different pathways. mTOR, which is more tissue growth. AMPK, which is more mitochondrial growth. That competing interest is called the interference effect. We've covered specific examples of how best to find the marriage between strength and endurance gains as you pursue your goals throughout the year. The real key to this is dialing one aspect down as the other one goes up, such as bike volume down and strength training load up. Then shifting a few days here and there around the sessions of training that you're doing to make it work best for you, the individual. Then being patient with the process. Most of us should not be overly concerned about the interference effect throughout the course of the year. In particular, during base season, if we want to do it right, yes, this is where we want to definitely shift things around so that the intensity and the load that we're doing in the gym gives us that benefit that we're looking for. And so that we're not just going hard all of the time or that we're not having the bike intensity and the bike training getting in the way of what we're doing in the gym. However, if you cycle your training intensity and volume, like I talked about during the podcast today, and like some of the strategies that will be in the companion article, I think that you'll find a ton of success when it comes to finding that right balance in the gym and on the bike. So I hope that I made some of these uh, complicated aspects a little bit more simple for you. I also hope that the examples that I provided to you, you can apply to your own training and that companion article, it's, it's going to be worth going back to. So check it out. Let us know if you have questions. I'm going to love to hear from you on this one. It's a pretty complicated topic, pretty complicated and in-depth uh, um, thing to put together. So uh, hope you like it. Thanks for listening. All for now.